Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Thang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 811, subdomain visit count. At the moment, this problem is pretty popular with the interview service Carrot. If you don't know what Carrot is, essentially, it's a website that you can outsource your technical interviews to. They have a pool of interviewers, and companies will basically pay this company to you know do the interview for them and then let them know whether or not you pass the interview so basically they don't have to do these lead code style questions themselves they just let carrot do it and then they'll give them the signal of whether or not to hire you anyway let's read the question prompt a website domain discuss.leadcode.com consists of various subdomains at a top level we have com at the next level we have leadcode.com and at the lowest level discuss.leadcode.com when we visit a domain like discuss.leetcode.com, we also visit the parent domains leetcode.com and com implicitly. Account paired domain is a domain that has one of the two formats, rep d1.d2.d3 or rep d1.d2, where rep is the number of visits to the domain and d1.d2.d3 is the domain itself. For example, 9001 discuss.leetcode.com is a count paired domain that indicates that discuss.leetcode.com was visited 9001 times. Given an array of count paired domains CP domains, return an array of the count paired domains of each subdomain in the input. You may also uh, you may return the answer in any order. So, now let's look at an example. Okay. Let's look at an example. And before we do, I just want to mention that this is one of those questions where lead code has worded it horrendously. If you look at the question itself, it has more downvotes than it has upvotes. And the reason for that is because whoever wrote this sucks at English, did not explain what you actually need to do. And it's super confusing, really unclear. And you think you know what you're doing and then you submit the answer and it turns out the answer is completely different because whoever wrote this needs to brush up on their English. Uh, anyway, so let's look at an example here. So we're given CP domains, 900 google.mail.com, 50 yahoo.com, 1 intel.mail.com, and 5 wiki.org. And we can see that this is the output we want to return here. But instead of me just reading out the output, which really doesn't tell you anything about how to solve this question, let's actually walk through this. So we need to process all of our CP domains in order to find our final solution. So let's start with the first one, this 900 google.mail. So what does the 900 represent, right? The 900 is the visit count for, you know, google.mail.com. And, you know, remember from how the problem was given to us, you know, we have this domain, which, you know, at the lowest level is google.mail.com. And then there's also the mail.com portion. And then there's just the .com portion. So there's three domains here that technically have been visited 900 times. So what we want to do is essentially figure out all the domains present in this kind of big domain. So like I said, one domain is going to be, you know, Google um, dot mail uh, dot com. So that's going to be one of them. Then we're going to have mail dot com and then we're going to just have dot com. And each one of these is going to be visited 900 times. So what we want to do is we want to maintain a dictionary, which is going to have as the key each one of these domains, you know, the ones that we just got. And then as the value is going to be the visit count. And then we're going to basically parse out all those domains as we go through our CP domains and then just increment the count each time. So, you know, let's think of having a dictionary here. So we'll have, oh God, I have to write this out again. But basically we'll have Google dot mail dot com and this is going to be visited at the moment 900 times then we have mail.com so mail.com um, and this is also going to be visited 900 times and then we have just.com which is visited 900 times uh, as a like in the process of visiting google.mail.com we I guess we kind of like recursively go through these uh, that's just how the problem is given to us. I don't know if that's how the actual internet works, but again, this problem is really weird. So then, you know, we've processed this one. Cool. So now we get to yahoo.com, 50yahoo.com. And what does that mean? That means that, you know, we're going to visit yahoo.com 50 times.com 
50 times and then we're also going to visit .com an additional 50 times. So yahoo.com is not in our dictionary so we put it in there. So yahoo.com and it's going to be visited 50 times and then notice that we've already visited .com 900 times so we just increment the count. We don't add another key so it's just going to become 950. Cool. So now we get to intel.mail.com and then there's three domains here, right? We have the intel.mail.com, we have mail.com, and then we have just.com again. So we visit, you know, intel.mail.com once. So we can add that to our dictionary because we haven't seen it before. So intel, oops, intel.mail.com. Uh, and this is gonna be once, and then we've already visited mail.com, so we just increment the count, so this becomes 901, because obviously this is only one time here, and then .com we've already visited, so we just increment the count, so we get 951. Cool, so we process this one. Now we just need to do wiki.org, which is gonna have wiki.org and then just.org, and both of those are gonna be visited five times, so in our dictionary here, maybe we can expand it. Um, we're gonna visit wiki, wiki dot, uh, this is so painful with the mouse, wiki.org, it's gonna be visited five times, and then dot org, we've actually never visited it, so we're gonna return dot org, and that's gonna be visited five times. So we can see that um, you know google.mail.com was visited 900 times, dot mail.com was visited 901 times, dot com was visited 951, Yahoo was 50, intel.mail.com once, wiki.org five times, and .org five times, which is actually matches what our answer is here. I think theirs is a little bit out of order compared to how we inserted it, but if you look at the counts, they all match up, right? Google.mail.com, 900, uh, let's see, let's, oops. Oh wait, sorry, that's mail.com, whoops. Yeah, so mail.com, we can see that, where is it, 901, so that matches. Yahoo.com, 50, that matches. Google.mail.com, 900. Those two match wiki.org, five, that matches. Uh, Five.org, that matches. Intel.mail.com, once, that matches. And then, um, where is it, .com, 951, that matches. So that's essentially how you wanna do it. What we wanna do is, again, we're gonna go from left to right over our CP domains. We're going to basically build all the possible kind of domains we can. So we're gonna split on all the dots and then we're gonna chain them together. So it'll be like google.mail.com, then it's gonna be mail.com and then just.com. Um, and then we're just going to increment the count uh, in the dictionary for each one of those domains that we built. Uh, and then at the end, we just, I think we need to kind of zip together our answer with just like the, the count again. So we, don't, we can't just return this dictionary. I think it has to be like the count first and then the actual domain uh, and then you're just gonna format that as like whatever string leak code actually wants it. But essentially that's the algorithm. Uh, hopefully that's clear. It is a weird one. I, I don't understand how they expect you to figure this one out. It's written really poorly, but that's what we wanna do. Let's go to the code editor. I think it's only like 10 lines of code. So really not that complex to implement. More the difficulty is actually just figuring out what to do. So enough blabbing, let's go write the code. Okay, welcome back. Let's write the code. Remember that we need some sort of dictionary to store the counts of our, you know, domains that we've accessed. So let's define that. So we're going to say, we're just going to call it counts and it's going to be um, a dictionary, right? So we're going to use collections dot default dict and we're going to initialize it with just an integer, which basically means that the key will be, uh, sorry, the value will be zero if the key doesn't exist. Uh, anyway, what we want to do is remember we need to go over our cp domains grab this count and then we need to grab the domain and then start splitting the domain into pieces and then you know figuring out each of the subdomains so for like google.mail.com it's going to be google.mail.com then we'll have mail.com and then also .com so let's do that so we're going to say for domain in uh, cp domains we need to first split out the count in the actual domain itself. So we're gonna say count, and then domain is gonna equal domain.split. And now we've split out the count in the domain, but obviously this is a string and we need to work with integers here. So we need to convert our count to an actual integer. So we're gonna say count is gonna be an integer because we can't you know, increment an integer key in our dictionary with a string, that won't work. 
And now what we need to do is we need to find each of the pieces within our domain. So we're going to need to split our current domain on the, you know, dots here. So we're going to say the fragments fragments is going to equal to what? So domain dot split. And this time we want to split on um, dots, right? And now we need to basically build all the possible, you know, subdomains out of this domain. Um, and then, you know, increment that count in our dictionary. So we're going to say for I in range len fragments, what we want to do is we want to say, okay, counts, counts, counts of now we need to basically build the fragment, right? So, you know, if we split google.mail.com, we're going to get the words Google mail.com. So we need to join them all together and that's one domain. And then on the next iteration, we'll be here at this mail.com. Then we need to basically just link these. So we essentially just whatever the current index is, we are joining with dots the rest of the um, the array of fragments. So what we need to do is we're going to say, you know, uh, dot join. We're going to join basically the rest of the fragments, right? So fragments from I onwards. And that's going to be our string, right? And we're going to increment whatever the count is for that, you know, string that we just built here. We're going to increment it by whatever the count was that we got earlier. And that's essentially what we have to do. And we went over this in kind of the diagram and how it worked. So if you don't understand this part, go back to the drawing. Uh, it should be clear. So we're going to do that for every single domain in uh, CP domains. And we're going to have our final count dictionary. But remember that we're not returning the dictionary. We're actually returning a string here. Uh, sorry, we're returning a list where it's going to be the count and then each possible domain that we can build um, in there. So what we want to do is we just want to basically return the output of our uh, dictionary here. And what we're going to do is we're going to return. So let's see return. So we need to do a list. So we're going to format our string here. We're going to use Python's F strings and we're going to return what? So we need to return the count and then space domain um, for. So remember that the count, the dictionary here is the domain is the key and then the value is the actual count. So we're going to say for domain count in counts dot items. And that's all we need to do. Let's just make sure we haven't made any bugs here. OK, cool. And let's submit this, make sure it works. And it does. Cool. What is the time and space complexity for our algorithm? Well, let's do the space complexity first because it's rather simple. So basically in counts, we're storing, you know, our CP domains input, which is, you know, all the domains we could get. So the amount of domains we have is going to be dependent on the actual number of, you know, domains given to us. So this is going to be big O of M. And even though that we're splitting into pieces, if you look at the actual constraints of the problem here, our domain is actually fixed. It's either going to have three pieces to it or two pieces. So in the worst case, it's all going to be three piece domains, which is going to mean that we have, you know, three pieces for each domain that we need to store. And assuming they're all unique, it's going to be a big O of three N. But asymptotically, this is just big O of N. So what is the space complexity here? Well, we oh, sorry, the time complexity, we just did the space. So again, we're going through the CP domains. So, you know, we need to process each one of them. So that's going to be a big O of N operation. But now we have to do this part here where we're splitting, we're splitting again, then we're joining. And you may think that this is going to be a big O of N operation because typically the split is big O of N and then, you know, we're doing it in a nested. So you're like, OK, it should be big O of N squared for the time complexity. But because we know that our CP domain here is fixed, it's either going to be length three or it's going to be length two. Basically, these are constant time operations. Um, you know, in the worst case, we're just going to have to do two splits. And since we know this ahead of time, um, you know, this is only going to cost us, you know, basically two splits. So because we know ahead of time that this is fixed, this actually becomes a big O of one operation um, because it's basically constant time. We know exactly what it's going to take. And it's, you know, in the worst case, we're going to have to split two times right on these two dots. And that's the worst case. And we know that up front and it's not really dependent on anything within CP domains. 
So because of that, it's actually going to be big O of one for this split, this split, and then this joining because these are fixed lengths and we can just assume that this is going to be big O of one. So your space comp uh, time complexity is actually going to be big O of n for this problem. Um, you know, if it wasn't the case that these are known ahead of time, then it would be probably big O of n squared for the time complexity. But because we know that it follows either this format or this format, um, then essentially it, we can count it as a constant space, uh, a constant time operation because we know ahead of time what it's going to be. Uh, and it's just going to be some multiplier on the n here. Um, but that's fine because asymptotically it's just going to be big O of n. So that's going to be your time and space complexity. Again, a little bit difficult to kind of understand, but I think once you think about it a little bit and realize, okay, this is known ahead of time, so therefore it's a constant, um, then it starts to click a little bit more. Hopefully the you know code kind of makes the actual problem make sense uh, and the diagrams also help. I definitely think that this, yeah, there's a reason why this is downvoted more than it's upvoted. Um, it's, it's really poorly worded. So anyway, I hope this video helps you understand this question. If you see it again, it's like what, I don't know, 12 lines of code and that includes white spaces. So, um, really easy one. I think that even if you memorize this one and just kind of regurgitate it, uh, it's quite easy to walk through. So you don't really have to be a genius to understand this one. Uh, anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like comment, subscribe. If there's anything you'd like me to make in the future, just leave the question in the comment section below and I'll be happy to do that for you guys. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and have a nice day. Bye.